Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Real Hero Show. Nick here with you, along with Ben, to discuss the Wheel of Time Season 1 finale. There will be spoilers for those of you that haven't seen it yet, though I'd imagine by this point people would have probably seen it. That being said, I just want to start off by saying, Ben and I just briefly spoke off screen. I know this episode might not please a lot of book readers out there. We're going, to, we're going to discuss this in depth as possible. I just want to say for the record, put your comments below as to what you feel or how you felt about this episode. We'll kind of dissect this into three different parts, uh, starting with the flashback that takes place 3,000 years ago. And of course, as this popped up to me, I'm like, oh, okay, we're going back in time to see how it all sort of went down. We get some new characters, Luz and... and uh, uh, Latra, I'm, I'm guessing is probably the was the pronunciation, um, mm -hmm. and to me it was one of those they're discussing what to do with the dark one, and my guess was well he's you know kind of dressed in in uh, darker um, robes, her in lighter, so of course you know being the dragon reborn in the Amaryllis seat, and kind of working together as as friends. So to me I was like oh okay so the dragon reborn at this point in time was an evil but the interesting part that i kind of took from it was that you know it's possible and i wondered if Luz was the person that kind of started the the maddening of men with the one power um so yeah you definitely hit on it right there nick um so Luz theron is from the books the original dragon the dragon being given uh, a nickname that he gave uh, that was given to him um, and there is an allusion to Luz Theron and his 100 companions, which were um, male Aes Sedai who decided to try to end the Dark One once and for all. And in, in doing so, um, when they were sealing the Dark One away as the Dark One had tried to take over the world, in what was known as the second, well, not, no, was not known then, but uh, is known colloquially as the Second Age or the Age of Legends, um, the Dark One's counterstroke is what placed um, the taint on the male half of the of the the One Power, and therefore um, caused all male channelers going forward to go mad. So that is exactly um, what what happened there uh, in that discussion between Luz Theron and the Tamerlan Seat. Yeah, and the other interesting point was when she mentions if this doesn't go right, it could send us set us back you, you know thousands of years or, or generations and which we've seen in the moments later at the window they're they're a pretty advanced civilization you've got flying vehicles it really looks com the complete opposite of what we're actually seeing three thousand years later and yeah i'm like well something went bad between now and then obviously um which again i think was just sort of alluding to how it went down between uh, you know, Luz Theron and and the Dark One, and yeah, the go ahead. Sorry, the uh, the Second Age, the Age of Legends, ended with something no with, with the obviously the um, the sealing way of the Dark One, the um, the 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 taint upon the um, male half of the 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 One Power, and then that caused all these male channelers because there were a lot more because they weren't hunted down because nobody knew what the madness was. Right. Um, to bring about uh, a cataclysmic event that ended the Age of Legends known as the Breaking of the World. Um, if uh, to, to, to put it to our sort of more, more modern myths and such, um, it's, it's sort of a, a, a Noah level um, flood. You know, you've got uh, continents breaking apart, cities mm -hmm. that were above, gr above ground are now underwater, These pieces that were, above, were underwater are now above ground, mountains, are um, being created where they were never done before. So it's it's not it, it's a literal breaking of the crust of this world. Um, gotcha. And uh, just to, uh, to to throw it in for the the book readers as well, um, uh, the age that we're currently seeing, yes, it's the third age, and you can just see how far uh, how how far back everybody's fallen. Um, yeah. From this second age. Um, you know, they've got, as you mentioned, they, um, in the books, they're known as show cars and show wings. But yes, fl um, uh, flying, you know, airplanes and flying cars and 
all sorts of um, incredible um, inventions that right. obviously have been lost from time. Right. Uh, lost two times, sorry, in the breaking. Um, you know, they even have their own form of electricity or yeah. power. Um, so they don't have to worry uh, so much. And then we see just how far this world has fallen when it comes to um, when it comes to the third age where it's back to torches and, um, you know, all, you know, and, and horses and carts and uh, all that. So, yes, the breaking of the world took a, a huge toll on on what happened between the uh, the second age and the first age. Yeah, it's Sorry, the second age and the third age. My mistake. Yeah, I know what you meant. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's pretty extraordinary how, how that all sort of fell apart. And of course, like you said, the channeling of men um, before people realized what, you know, the maddening or the madness was from that. And uh, speaking of of a man who wanted wants to channel and asks Moraine to, ch to channel, uh, you know, we see Rand and Moraine continuing their journey through the blight. And... And Rand has a dream, uh, which I kind of figured was a dream because I'm like, there's no way they're going to kill Moraine off like that uh, with the yeah. knife through the back of the head through her mouth. Although I was like, well, that was pretty gruesome, but definitely seems like a dream. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I think if anything, that was kind of signifying what was happening. And of course, we see the, uh, I guess, the human form kind of like in this, this background here where we see the dark one kind of change from this you know, uh, otherworldly form and it kind of, kind of turn turn to flesh. Um, but it's with some of the things that, that are, that are mentioned in that dream, right? Like the heron marked blade that, um, he's like, Oh, you think that's who your father is? Like, ha, 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 ha. and, mm -hmm. and ran sort of still like, I don't want to say oblivious to it, but maybe he just hasn't fully realized the, the true callings yet to to who he really is or or, or where he he really comes from so um yeah. what would you think about that dream well there's certainly a certain amount of um of rand denying what the truth is because yeah. he's lived so many years of his life thinking of tam althor as his father and and to find out that he's been sort of told a story a fable a lie this whole time to protect him yeah. um Certainly, Tam never thought that it would come to anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but he, he, there's a lot to process. Not only is he he essentially the, the 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 human being who's prophesized to either save the world from the Dark One or help the Dark One herald in uh, uh, an age in, in the Dark One's own image. He is a male channeler, which you know all uh, men and women and of of this the third age have been raised to fear male channelers because they all know they're going to go mad eventually so rand also has to face the fact that he knows that he's going to be affected by this channeling but yeah. he has to live long enough to it seems like he wants to fight the dark one uh he wants to you know push the dark one back into into his lair where he can no longer touch the world and affect change um he wants to win the last battle uh for the light not for the dark but you know if you think it's a lot of stuff that he's got to process right now um and uh, as you and i were talking about from before uh before we started recording um the vast majority of this episode is a departure from the books so right. there's just a lot of um a lot of me just sort of watching and, and letting the episode play out. As a book reader, um, a lot changed. And there's a lot of pieces that I like from the books that are now missing, um, mm. which I found to be rather unfortunate. Um, some choices that were made in this episode are, are, are definitely more egregious in my mind than others. Some of them I can completely understand um, in the books. Um, it's actually uh, our merry band of... of um, of heroes all goes to the eye of the world together um there they meet um a another legendary creature um by the name of the green man and mm -hmm. the green man helps them uh save um you know to fight um uh ishmael who is a forsaken who is taking on the appearance of the dark one um and trying to uh 
make people fear him as they would fear the Dark One. Uh, and a, a battle happens there along with two other um, Forsaken who were caught on the outside of the ceiling of the boar. So they're sort of kind of broken down, sort of been, they've, uh, I think the term they've used, the phrase was, they've been gr uh, ground by the wheel for 3,000 years. So um, they're, they're a little worse for wear. That was something I was rather looking forward to. Um, and another thing that's really, uh, really, really different is the fact that the eye of the world in the books is a place of sanctuary within the blight. It's um, it's greenery, it's lush trees because it's been watched over by this uh, by the green man. Hmm. Um, and so um, you know the blight just doesn't exist there uh, because the green man's power is keeping them away. Um, there is an um, they walk into a cave through the you know just like they do um, in in this show. And uh, in that cave is a large pool of pure, uh, of a pure version of the male half of the, of the one power. Um, so it was placed there because uh, at the time when, when the mad people, when I said I knew that both male and female knew that uh, the madness was becoming a thing, that the dark one had affected the male half of the source. So they worked and they cleaned this pool of physical uh, male half of the one source, and it's there, and that is what Rand calls upon in his time of need, is he calls upon this pure form of it so he can have enough power to do what he needs to do without being affected. Um, and then inside that pool, uh, underneath it all, underneath this, uh, underneath the one power, once it's been drained because it is a physical thing, that's where they find the golden box uh, the Horn of Allaire, um, mm. and most importantly, um, we get our first glimpse of the Dragon Banner, um, the Banner of Luz uh, of Luz Theron. Um, it's a golden drag, a red and gold dragon um, upon a white field. Um, and uh, additionally, one thing I know, and this is a minor quibble, at least in my opinion, I'm sure others, uh, other book readers, their mileage may vary. Luz Theron is the dragon not the dragon reborn he was the original dragon um and there hadn't been dragons since so the um the, yes in the time of need the dragon would be spun back out by the wheel so that would make rand the the, the, the dragon reborn the first dragon reborn right. um there hadn't been others so his his stature is a little bit more prestigious but also a lot well uh, less well known because there hadn't been other dragons so people in the world don't really know what to expect. The only thing that had existed were our false dragons. So mm, okay. big departures from the books there. Um, there is a battle at uh, Fal Faldara, but um, there is no um, channeling, uh, you know, channeling uh, right. uh, women there. There's no linking. Um, and then uh, we're going to get into some really gnarly stuff here. So, um, um, if you're looking to not be spoiled for potential things in season two, you may want to skip a little bit um, because one <laughs> of the two, two, two of the most egregious uh, things uh, um, that happened happened in that the line of channeling women. Um, uh, we'll say three things and only two of them happen there. So give us about three minutes, skip ahead, finish the video, please. Cause then you can hear uh, the rest of our thoughts about it. But right. uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hit drop some really big uh, spoilers that happen could still happen in season two, but um, we'll see first and foremost, um, Nynaeve being a wilder means that she has a, um, a block so she can't channel the one power unless she's incredibly, incredibly angry. Hmm. Um, and when, and she can't even sense the one, the, uh, the source when she's not angry. Um, so for her to be able to just be scared and walk out on a field and link, uh, is the kind of the complete opposite of everything the book had done. Maybe there's not going to be time to go into wilders having blocks because they had to sort of learn to channel on their own. Um, Maybe that's not something the book is going to address, uh, again, for time purposes, but um, that's a huge thing that I know of a bunch of people, um, myself included, are not, well, 
are not, I'm not thrilled with it. I'm not going to say it ruined the show for me, um, but it is. Uh, I, I was. It would have been a nice touch. I really enjoyed that part of the book because it, um, you know, Nine A being such a, a powerful channeler, is in a bunch of situations where you know her life is in da- you know her da- her in danger, but she's scared and not angry. So you get some really good tension there, right. um, and and things like that. The second thing. Uh, what can the power not do? I'm pretty sure I said it earlier in an episode, the one power cannot heal death. Um, and then at the very end, we have Egwene seemingly bringing Nine Ave back from the dead. I don't know if that's what it was. I don't know if it, it certainly seems like Nine Ave was killed in the moment. Yeah. And she I brought bet. her back to life. That is probably one of the most egregious pieces of uh, departure from the book, in my opinion. Hmm. Um, I it, it, especially because it just sort of ruins stakes. Right, it or, does. Um, oh, no, he's been stabbed through her. Just bring over your deus ex Eguina, and she'll come over and fix <laughs> the thing. Um, and, you know, I'm sure they're going to go, oh, oh, she doesn't remember how she did it, and everybody else was dead, so they couldn't see the weave, so it's a one-time thing. Not my favorite move. Um, and then finally... Um, we have the question of Moiraine and her current status as a channeler. Um, and then I apologize, Nick, because I'm sure you want to talk about this later, but we're going to jump It's totally fine. Yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. Let's, let's crush it in there. Yep. Has Moiraine been still? Or has Moiraine been shielded in a technique that we haven't been introduced yet called a tying off or a knotting of a weave um, occurred? So, again, weaves much being like threads, um, and that's how it's all described in the book. They can be tied off. They can basically be made self-sustaining for a certain amount of time before they unravel. Um, right. You know, it's it's basically if you're focusing on it, it can it, it's indefinite. But uh, um, the stronger you are, the more it's like in, in like D and D terms, the more rounds you have before the, yeah. the weave dissipates on its own. Right. Um, was Moraine stilled, um, or was she? Um, well, was she shielded? And then um, our antagonist, uh, did he tie off that um, that particular weave? Um, I am of the opinion that it is the latter and not the former. Okay. Um, number one, because having Moraine get stilled at this point in time would really mess with a lot of future book stuff. Yeah. Um, and second of all, we never saw what happened to Loghain happen to Moraine. Right. We didn't see yep. that um, that severing the go on. So the, the you know more than just wishful thinking. I do. I, I'd like to think I have a little bit of evidence that backs it up. Yeah, I think so but, too. Um, I think she, I think um, our antagonist, uh, the dark one, uh, Ishmael. We haven't decided. Uh, we haven't been told who it is yet. Um, though again, I think just as a book reader, the fact that it. Well, first of all, Moiraine said it's the first battle, not the last. I don't think the Dark One would come out for the first battle. Um, I think he'd probably send his lackeys. Um, second of all, I don't think the Dark One would wield the the One Power. I think the Dark One would just rather send millions and millions of of Dark friends and such to do that. I don't even think... I think since the Dark One exists on the level of the creator, they have their own sort of powery thing going on. And it does seem like what we saw our antagonist uh, use was the one power, the male half of the one power. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm choosing to believe that is the Forsaken Ishmael. Yeah, I mean, I thought um, I'll, pu- I'll put a little uh, uh, blip on the screen just to say when you can skip and whatnot. But yeah, we'll know, put some chapter breaks in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and that's one of the things where I, I think, or rather I thought about in that moment because, y- you know, to me, especially when Rand's like, I, he says he knows the place, and then Moran's like, well, this existence was purged. Then he's like, I fought someone here, and then we mm-hmm. can kind of see this like little vision, um, to the point where he he just like you know, boom, blacks out or something, goes into this dream, which I'm like, oh, this is the dark one, like tricking him or whatever. Um, and then we we see you know Moraine holding Rand uh, with a knife to his throat. It's like, haha, I came prepared uh, just in case. But you know, but the, when she tries to use it, I'm like, oh damn, like he's actually like that powerful, which I kind of assumed he would be. But yeah, same thing. I'm like, did 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 he just like 
gank her powers away from her and so she's done and can't use the one power anymore or was it just like a temporary thing like because you know again kind of going to the end of the episode once lan uh finds her he's like unmask the bond and she's like i can't and i'm like oh shit and the other thing Mm -hmm. in the back of my mind i'm like i wonder if this happens in the book and i'm like and if it doesn't this is gonna mean like it's gonna set up some some bad things and piss a lot of book readers off and i could you know kind of relate to that as you know other uh, as other material that i've read and kind of just not really coming to fruition or being changed but um it's again one of those things where i'm curious to see what's going to happen in in future seasons because of this and uh you know and we'll kind of get into some other things here in a moment but you know for the sake of you know the the dark one saying he has a choice to choose you know light or dark and you know if he does choose dark then you know his throat's going to get slipped then what happens uh you know I, again it doesn't happen so we don't really need to go into that you know what if but mm-hmm. you know once land chooses the light and he kind of does this like point blank like kamiyamiha hadouken and kind of mm-hmm. just like I don't want to say obliterates the dark one, but at the same time, again, it almost seemed like it wasn't him or it was just some sort of iteration of him. Cause I'm like, there's no way that he shows up himself gets yeeted out 3000 to bring up for another 3000 years. Like it doesn't again, because of this season one and we know that there's potentially eight coming. So, and just like Moraine says, I fear this isn't, the last battle but the first and right. it would kind of like just what you were just saying so that all that all makes a lot of sense you know and one of the, one of the other, other things that uh i don't say i didn't didn't like per se but when rand's like tell them i'm dead and she's like i can't tell that lie and he's like you'll figure out something to say which she does uh but he goes off alone and i'm just sort of thinking where the hell is he going to go? Because at the same time, if he is, you know, obviously the dragon reborn and what he just saw and took place, wouldn't he want to bolster up everyone and kind of, you know, go back to his friends and regroup and go, okay, here's what we're facing. Here's what I just saw. Here's what we need to know. You know, by the way, Moraine is potentially cut off from the one power. So we need to kind of, you know, help her at the same time. Like there's, there's a lot of like, um, like, like a lot of, lot of uh, just like kind of disjointedness that um, I'm like, what well, it kind of makes sense to to a certain degree of why they would do that in in the finale, but at the same time, because this has deviated from the books in a sh- in a in a matter of a show sense, it it's I don't say alarming either, but I, I think it's it's a, it's something that is going to they're going to have to figure out a way to make it all feel feel good or, or just or make more sense in the next season or seasons because yes. again it's like you're, you're taking a risk here doing what you did in season one finale you've got to make up yeah. for it and and honestly have a have a point but prove to us book readers and non-book readers alike that what you chose to do and deviate from it was actually a wise decision agreed um to to the point of Rand uh, piecing out, that is actually uh, that's a book left. I, I should have mentioned that. Um, okay, okay. And I failed to. Uh, yeah, that's Rand okay. Rand wants to. He he definitely fears the madness and everything right. that he's been told. So right. what he's trying to do in leaving is to protect his friends in his own way. Sure. He yeah. can't hurt his friend. Um, Luz Luz Theron uh, famously his name other than the um the dragon his latter nickname in the end of his life was kinslayer um in fact (laughs) um the prologue to the eye of the world book is um one of the forsaken taunting uh loose theron after loose theron is walk is in the full throes of his madness walking through a palace where he just you know blinded by the madness killed his whole family his children his wife um and this this one this forsaken uh is able to use um the pa- uh, a, a power um to lift the madness from uh Luceran's mind just long enough for him to realize 
what he's done. Um, and uh, up then Luz Theron in his anger and his grief draws so much of the pow one power that um, he burns himself out, he kills himself and he creates uh, a mountain where he was. And that mountain is the one we see in the background of Tarvalon, uh, hmm. Kinslayer's Den. Or sorry, the Dragon uh, Dragon Mount, I'm sorry. Where the dragon right. stood was the Dragon Mount, Kinslayer's Den is something else, but it, it is uh, Luce Theron's other nickname was Kinslayer um, because he went mad and killed his family and Rand knows that and he doesn't want his friends to be around Same because thing. he do truly care for them and he doesn't know how long this madness will take to onset. Nobody studied madness in men. Um, right. So they don't know, is it? Is it just something that happens? Does it happen the more you use the power? Um, does it happen quickly? Does it happen slowly? Is there a way to fend it off? Um, so he tries very hard. He knows who he is. He knows what he is in terms of being a male channeler. He knows he's the dragon reborn. He knows he's a male channeler. And he says, I am danger incarnate. Not in a way where you've got him charging at the dark one with a sword and going, I am, you know, going to uh destroy everything in my past i am not he is he, he knows he is dangerous to his friends um and i think he's quite scared of, of what he could do to them uh, if he loses his grip so that is why he ends up leaving so that is um taken from the first few chapters of book two um and it definitely looks like we're going to get a, a lot of the great hunt in uh in season two of um of uh of the wheel of time so we're already entering book two at this point then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just at the very end, there's some book two stuff going on. Gotcha. Okay. Cause that was going to be a follow-up question I had towards the end was, was season one filled with, or at least has, has completed uh, <laughs> most of the, of the first book. Uh, but again, yes. because there's 14 books in eight seasons, I imagine we probably would have to at some point skip around or, or, or make up for some, no pun intended, but for some time. Yeah, they've, they've also made it perfectly clear they're willing to excise some um, some, some side uh, some side uh, plots. Be, um, as I mentioned I, earlier, we never went to Camlin. We never met uh, Elaine. Um, I'm that's been confirmed to, to be happening sometime in uh, season two as they cast Elaine uh, as well as a few other uh, well known characters. Okay. Um, which gives me some ideas about what we're going to see in uh, season two, um, which will be good stuff. Uh, and we also, uh, season two, book two, we also are introduced to our um, our friends from across the ocean. Yes, indeed. Uh, we'll save that for for the end because I do have a, I do have a question yeah. for you as well as our other book readers out there. But um, let's talk about let's talk about Faldara um, for just mm -hmm. a little bit here because you know we get this romantic moment with you know Lan and and Nynaeve, you know, and, and what a moment that was. It, I think that's that, that is going to quickly become the always of the Wheel of Time television show. <laughs> yeah, or the um, or the uh, what was it from Wandavision? Um, Grief. Uh, oh goodness. I should have written it down. It just came to my mind there. Um, but yes. Um grief is just uh, grief is with the emotion of love everlasting. Right. Correct me in the comments because I'm sure I just got that wrong. Um I think, I but think yes, it's something like that. What yeah. was a what heck of a line from land to nine Ave? Yes. Yes indeed. And of course, when you know he goes out to, to chase after Moraine and then you know <laughs> Uh, we could just talk about it now. Once uh, Emilisa it has asked for anyone that can channel to you know go outside the city to face the the Trolloc invasion, um, and of course you know the number goes from like five to ten thousand, and then ten to twenty thousand, mm -hmm. and you know you know it doesn't seem like Tarwin's gap's going to hold, in, in which it didn't, and um, yeah, you know. When she starts to link the the five of them together, um, and you know she releases this this enormously powerful ion lightning storm, right, and just completely wipe out wipes out all the trollocs. I was like, uh, you know, I, I'm watching. I'm like, oh damn, like that was legit. It looked cool. It seemed pretty cool. 
Um, but as she can't let go and holds on, and you kind of see the one of the other women, her face is kind of starts like burning from within. And I'm like, oh, uh, we saw that at the bar from a vision that might potentially happen to Nynaeve. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she says, let go. I can't. And I'm like, oh, this is where Nynaeve will die. And, of course, she essentially sacrifices herself by absorbing more from uh, Egwene. And she dies. Egwene doesn't. But then, like you were saying um, earlier, where um, I'm like, well, it, I know they rushed or a little or hurried up the romantic relationship between Lan and 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 Nynaeve. Mm-hmm. But to do that, just to kill her off, I'm like, that makes no sense whatsoever. And then yeah. the fact that she, you know, is essentially brought back to life. And again, I know we're. I think, you know, episodes ago, once, uh, uh, you know, when, with, uh, with Loghain, when he almost killed everyone, right? But when Nynaeve kind of went, you know, again, when she got angry and let out the one power, um, she healed everyone, but they weren't dead because no, they were, they were grievously we, injured, but none were dead because right. we never, we couldn't save, uh, the green sister. Right, exactly. And and so that's where I was like, so she's not dead. She's alive. And again, those looked like some pretty like like uh gnarly looking burns and 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 death. Of course, we see Amelisa that she kind of like falls to her knees and then falls over, and we get like a nice even it it's the the scene's kind of dark to begin with, but you can still get a pretty good look at at her face and those those um those effects look look pretty well done but at the same time uh my there's no way she's living through that or going no, to recover I feel like we've got a, a bit of a princess bride thing going on exactly and it's sort Only of like mostly this, dead right and it's sort of like this plot convenience right we're like just kidding yeah. we're not going to kill it off because obviously that would really upset the book readers but i think in the same at the same time in the pro like in the process you're still doing it because that doesn't happen because they're never there to begin with in the books right and to to a non book reader like myself, I'm like, oh, that's just a plot convenience thing. Like, you got to yeah. have them there because they're powerful and they can channel at the same time. Like, you're not going to kill two of the main protagonists off. So, you know, again, uh, I, I'm 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 curious to see how that all is going to play out in in uh, in the future. But at the same time, yeah. yeah, that was a bit of a pet peeve I had for this episode. Um, oh, totally. You you and I think that's one of the biggest qualms that everybody book readers and shows alike show watchers alike are going to have with this episode is the fact that it's pure pot it, it's pure you know they kill her for stakes and then they come back you know for stakes in an emotional moment and then they bring her back to life there's seemingly no you know there's no consequences and no explanation other than the fact that it goes against everything else we've seen so far um and, and, you know, I've been trying to wrap my head around why they made that decision. Again, I understand, oh, look, it, it, it does raise the stakes. It adds an emotional beat. Um, but I can't think of how they're going to explain their way out of this one um, <laughs> yeah. to the satisfaction of everyone. It's going to be interesting for sure. And yeah. um, with, with the horn, uh, kind of like you were mentioning before, the, the, one of the changes where it's supposed to be the eye of the world, it's not. It's in uh, Faldara under the throne. And as they're retrieving it in the box, they say what it's used for and who can use it, its Mm -hmm. purpose. But we see Padden Fane make his exquisite entrance to the show. Uh, And I know uh, last episode, I was wondering who that was and, uh, one of our fellow uh, watchers of book readers here I, had kind of mentioned that I, I, I saw you I, you two ch- chatting about it and I'm thinking to myself, but when will we see him appear? <laughs> and I, I kind of wondered if it would have been in the finale. And of course it, he, he does, you know, at the end and um, ever so slyly just, you know, takes it, takes the, you know, the, the box away, the horn away, but, you know, says all five of you have a part to play in this. And, you know, in, in mentions who might do what. And of course, as he's saying what each of the five people will potentially do, uh, you know, we see, we see a blip of Matt, which is that him returning to Shadar Logoth? 
that was my interpretation. Yeah. That's what I thought. Cause I'm like, so Matt went back there again, not sure for what purpose yet or what's that is, that is new, newly new, trod ter- uh, ground. So we will, uh, I'm so gonna, not another, another, not you. thing. Correct. Gotcha. Um, so again, that'll be something we'll have to think about moving forward, uh, you know, in, in season two. Um, but a- anything to say about, uh, I know we already talked about the, the, the horn and it's where it's supposed to be and where it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, anything you want to say, um, I know there might be spoilers within this part, but, uh, anything yeah. about a uh, pad and fane. Um, so pad and fane steals the, the box containing the, um, the horn of Valer. And, um, the reason that's so important is the horn doesn't care who blows it. The horn is loyal to the horn sounder. Mm. So if if that horn is brought to the side of the dark and the dark uses the horn, that that will call back dead heroes, the, the, the most magnificent heroes of the of, of all the ages um, who have been selected by the wheel and bound to this horn to fight on their side. Even if they were... Um, you know, even if, you know, Luz Theron was the, you know, the, um, the epitome of fighting for the light, um, in his life, whoever, if, if the, the horn is sounded by somebody who is a dark friend, Luz Theron comes back and fights for the side that called him. He has no choice in that matter. Um, so the heroes of the horn are loyal to the horn sounder, not to their allegiances when they were alive. So that's a big deal. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, a very big deal there in who, um, who sounds the horn. Um, it was a little bit more special when it was in the eye of the world, covered up in this, this pool of the one power, hidden away from the world, guarded by a mythical being, whom, yeah. again, I completely understand the excising of the Green Man. Um, I love the Green Man's character, but it would have been very expensive, a lot of CGI um for a character that we meet for probably 10 minutes of screen time mm. um, in in that episode so uh i miss you green man but i understand why you were uh, you were cut um but it does you know i kind of wish that the the horn of valer was somewhere else other than like we know where it is it's been hidden under our chair all along we, right um, we, we sit up there and we we, we read books on top of <laughs> the horn that calls back earth's mightiest heroes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely an interesting way to put it. And kind of like you just said, for, for the sake of who, who uses it, obviously I, I could understand why the, the dark one would want it. Uh, especially if Luz Theron has no choice. Um, and, yeah. you know, and, and again with the, with the green man um, and, and, the lack of CGI uh, or budget rather uh, that that's a very fair point. Um, now I wonder if they'll try to fit him in someplace else in the story. And this, and the, the green man seasons. doesn't show up in every any other book. No, basically never. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like one flashback in the middle of book four or book five, if I'm remembering correctly, but like really the green man does not filter in, which is why I, it's just um, excuse the uh, the terrible pun, but he was a, an easy an easy flower to prune. Um, yeah. Again, much like meeting Elaine in in book one, it would have ended up being twenty minutes of screen time. They would have had to cast an actress, build the sets, uh, pay the actress, hope <laughs> hope the actress is willing to come back for season two without renegotiating. Um, so it was just easier to cut that whole storyline. And, and instead we meet Elaine when she becomes more of a regular series character rather than just cameo. We love our cameos. They're really cool. Um, you know, I know everybody who sees a Marvel movie or a DC movie is always looking forward to like, which character is going to cameo. Um, but uh, in a television series, when these characters are not yet established, it, it makes a ton of sense to just, let's let's kick that can down the road and we'll we'll do it more we'll do it right in season two right right and i mean i, I can relate to, as a as a big tolkien fan and you know as as much as i'm looking forward to the lord of the rings show i can relate to you know uh you, you wheel of time book readers out there because you know there's 
you know, the potential for the same thing to happen uh, with that series and, you know, characters or, or parts that may not appear at all. Um, it happened, you know, in Lord of the Rings, it happened in, in the Hobbit, you know, a character like Tom Bombadil, which I was really looking forward to seeing wasn't in any of the three movies and things that barely had any, uh, any, any length of time in the, on the pages at all were carried throughout, you know, more than one movie. Uh, the necromancer mm -hmm. being one of them, um, you know, the white orc being another one, uh, you know, so there's, there's, it, it's interesting how, how the book books come to, to life, whether it be a TV show or, or movie or movies. And um, it, it's, it's frustrating at times. And uh, I think it's probably the easiest comparison. Um, I know, yeah. you know, I'm talking with people that are, you know, are, are uh, Witcher fans and how like, um, I, I have to get into that uh, as well with this season two from The Witcher. So it's, but case in point is it, we always want the good parts from the book or parts that might seem cool to see come to life and they don't. And it's always like, uh, it, it's just, it's unfortunate, right? And yeah. um, so going into season two, um, yeah. especially at the end, the very end of this this episode, the finale we see it cut to the far western shore we see mm -hmm. a little little girl playing uh you know uh, at the beach and it cuts to the side and we see a bunch of ships and we see some channels on those ships and they start to form a tidal wave coming towards mm -hmm. this little girl and i'm like that seems like overkill why are you gonna do the little girl like that <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm fairly certain they didn't see the little girl at that. At probably that not. I think but... they were probably announcing their presence with some with some uh, with some pizzazz. But um, right, yeah. So um, those characters, those those people, they have a name. The channelers, they have a name. It's an entire society. Um, I'm not going to go into it because I'm curious. Uh, you know, so no spoilers. And um, book readers definitely know. There's a lot of. Um, lifts directly from the book in there um, a few subtle changes probably for the better um especially with some connotations of seeing that sort of thing on screen mm -hmm. um but we've got uh channelers we've got uh the square rigged sales that's a direct book from these people in the in in the um um in the books so we're going to find out a lot more about these people um and it's going to cause some complications because um, you know, much like you have individual nations and individual peoples uh, that we've met thus far, all with their own ideas of, of the Dark One and fighting the Dark One, um, there's still going to be people who believe they're doing it right and you're doing it wrong. And um, even though you have the same goal in mind, there's, you know, there's, right. there's more than way to accomplishment. Um, the white cloaks don't like shadow spawn any more than I said I, but they go about it in two completely different ways. Sure. So, um, you know, not only do you have the overarching good versus evil battle, we're going to have, you know, even, you know, additional ideological battles between humans, uh, along the way, causing just a, you know, a, 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 a right proper muck up of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's interesting. And, and I'm, obviously really curious i know that they're uh pretty much done with episode two if i remember or sorry season two if i remember correctly yeah i think it's pretty much wrapped yeah so i wonder if we'll we'll get it get it released uh in maybe around the same time in 2022 maybe around the november mark um of course, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm curious what what amazon prime's release schedule is going to be with a couple shows like you know um uh, the boys season three uh i think is supposed to be coming out at some point i'm not too sure if invincible season two will be coming out uh but the same thing with lord of the rings and uh the wheel of time so yep. they've got some some heavy hitters to release on amazon yeah, next year got, and i'm curious to see Maisel as well Maisel, yes so like you you i'm curious to see what the release schedule is going to be like and i hope none of them overlap each other and i hope there's at least uh some time to jump between one like we'll get this season and as, and as that season's ending you know the next show will potentially start the week after um so yeah. to give us time to talk about these shows to uh absorb them comment on them like them dislike them uh <laughs> and then 
again, kind of just keep moving on and, and guessing where, where they'll go from here. Um, so if you had to rate this episode, Ben, what would you give it? So I was thinking about this one. I give it a long, hard think. And um, after the the solid nine and of, of the last episode and just where it brought us um, as a book reader, um, this, you know, this, this book, this, this episode, I should say this finale really left me wanting. I went in expecting a lot more than I got. Um, and that's a lot of that's on me. I can admit that. Um, so I did pull my rating up from like my knee jerk. I'm a book reader. I wanted to see all these things. Well, they're not beholden to what I want to see. Uh, they're trying to make a good show. Um, so with that being said, it's still not a great rating, Nick. Um, I've got to put it at like a five, five and a half. It really tumbled coming off of uh, the previous episode because the previous episode was just so good. Um, it was. It felt like we really just, you know, we were doing really well with this whole season. And then at the last second, we just cracked our foot right into a door frame. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> know. Uh, uh, and said, I... some, said some words. Yeah, I, I, I totally I totally feel you on that. And that was one of the moments where I was thinking about last season or last episode of what that meant. Uh, and, you know, when I looked up um, the the ratings, of course, I think I mentioned this last time what the the average rating for the show was uh, on IMDb, just as a one one example, the average rating throughout the entire season was um a uh 7.5 and uh you know ironically the the best episodes were the previous one and um what's this one two three four uh, the fourth episode with uh with logan mm. uh now imdb has rated this episode a 6.2 uh at least IMDb, you mean their writers or, uh, or the, the, the viewers the audience the viewers okay yeah <laughs> Um, I was kind of ranging between a six and a 6.5 myself, um, yeah. not being a book reader, but, but, but having this expectation of really having, um, a bigger, more emphasized battle. Um, mm -hmm. and again, the whole thing with the channeling kind of threw me off the life and the death thing. Um, you know, just the deviation, you know, even more so knowing now was just kind sort of like, ah, oh, that's, that sucks. And um the stuff with with random rain the dark one was okay but i was i was still expecting a little bit more um and yeah i i think they could have done better i i really hope the uh, they 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 learn from this and of course it's it's kind of too late because of, because of they've already written you know they've already gone through the production the editing for the most part of season two uh they can't go back and reshoot it or for, no. Sorry for yeah for season two. So you, know, I, I'm really curious to see how season two is going to play out, and I, I really do want it to do well. And I really hope they yeah. they start to kind of improve upon uh, what they what they did with season one. They abide more so to the source material because um, I'm still wondering again what the Robert Jordan estate thinks about all this as well. Because um, mm -hmm. yes, Amazon has the has the money to to do whatever they want. But at the same time, the you know, the value of it has to be high enough for the fans and, and people to care to still to watch it. Because uh, if, yeah. if ratings and viewer viewership goes down, they're going to go, well, do we really need to make a season three? Or, or maybe they go, you know, we listened season three. We're going to do this differently. We're going to change some things around and really try to yeah. try to please everyone, book readers and non-book readers alike, uh, because we do want to do right by by the source material um and really make this a great show because it it is a you know great book series so and it's great great fantasy great fiction um so for the sake of the future i really hope they learn from this uh because they did have did have great episodes great parts through this season um i don't know if you can give give a, a full rating for for this season as as a whole but i still i love the whole season the season's Same. like so it, it's for me like I said, I'm quite hoping that this is part of, as I've been saying in my head, um, I quite hope this is an anomaly. It's a stumbling, you know, that right. more of what we get is going to be more like the beginning of the season. The whole season itself is a, is a solid seven and a half eight for me. It's really, I really enjoyed it. For the most part, they, you know, they made this book reader's opinion and this book reader's opinion 
good choices in what they showed on screen, what they cut. Um, it's just, uh, you know, with, uh, with a floor routine in gymnastics, what everybody remembers is the landing. You know, yep. you can have a great floor routine, but if you don't stick the landing, it's going to leave a bad taste in people's mouths. Um, yep. And I really don't th stick, think they stick the landing here. This, hopefully this is just going to be one of those things where when I do my rewatches of seasons one through eight, you know, eight years from now, um, I just sort of go, eh, we'll just skip episode eight and uh, we'll start season two. Oh, we right, don't need yeah. to see that one, right? We know uh, what happens here. It's fine. Yeah, we know what happens. There's a fight. Rand runs off. So you'll see a recap. Nothing happens to, <laughs> nothing happens to Nynaeve <laughs> because she's alive at the beginning at the end of the previous episode and she's alive at the end of this one. So nothing exactly. happens there. We're just going to just uh, shove that one under the table. Exactly. Um, so that's what exactly. I'm hoping. Uh, and I'm hoping that other book readers um, have the same opinion. And I'm really hoping that they say, "Let's, you know what? I'm not going to... First of all, please don't say that this that Amazon ruined your childhood. Um, <laughs> book readers, you guys, the books still exist as their own separate entity. Yep. Um, and since these decisions were made so far off the path of the book, um, I don't. I think you can still read the books and say, you know what, I really enjoy this source material. Um, and let's I all give season two a chance. Yep. Um, and that way we can give them Amazon a chance to to finish this off. Um, cause I think we all want to see the last battle happen. We all want to see, we all have plot lines that we all know are, that are coming up as book readers, um, that we really want to see on screen. Um, I can think of, you know, four or five really quickly that I want to see, uh, including a few I'm, I'm reading about right now as I do my, uh, my annual read through of all 14 books. Um, so let's let's all you know it's going to leave a bad taste in our mouths it's going to give a, a knee-jerk reaction but i think three four months from now i'm going to look back and go yeah that was a solid eight season with a horrific finale um and bring on season two as soon as that trailer comes out i know i'm going to be just as excited for season two as i was to see season one yeah i think it's fair that uh season one did well enough and i'm right there with you i, th I think overall this season is about somewhere between a 7.5 and an eight for me as well. Um, Cause I enjoyed all the other episodes and it was just the finale that kind of didn't do as well as I wanted yeah. it to. Um, so you know, we're getting season two regardless since it's already, it's already done. Yes. So <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to have any sort of wonder minute uh, whether or not it will or won't happen. And I think again, hopefully we'll, we'll all be, uh, feeling a bit better by the time season two comes and goes and and this point uh, say next year when we're talking about what potentially could happen in in season three and you know hopefully season two's finale is far better and we could we can start having those conversations like yeah it was a much better uh choice and and they did this right um you know we can always look back and say whether they did or they didn't um yeah <laughs> but hopefully they hopefully they will but um yeah overall um yeah i'm i'm glad they decided to make this uh series into a show uh especially for someone like myself who um just never had a chance to read the books um mm -hmm. but you know is, is getting um a taste of it, of course, like with your share of the knowledge from the books and, you know, commenters alike. And, uh, that's one of the things I want also want to say for, for anyone, um, again, that has been leaving comments, uh, you know, I really do appreciate them as well. Uh, and, and thank you for also keeping some things, uh, you know, a spoiler free, um, yes. much, much appreciated as well. Um, and yeah, let us know, uh, what you thought of this season in its entirety, uh, especially the finale episode and, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun ride, uh, chatting, chatting with Ben this entire time. And, you know, uh, I'm certainly looking forward to learning more about season two, uh, with what they might cover through the second book. Um, you know, I may try to kind of read a couple of things that may or may not spoil things, or I might just kind of go blindfold into it. Like I did with this, with this season and, um, kind of, kind of go along for that that ride and and, and offer yeah. the the the, the non-book reader um expectations as, as uh, on one side of the spectrum while you being on the other side of the spectrum where you know a lot and everything from the books so it's it kind of we we we're, we're we're encompassing the full circle here <laughs> yes yes we, we, we we're we're both sides of the of, of the power we have someone yes. <laughs> who hasn't seen anything and we've got someone who knows everything and right. together 
to, we work together better than apart, uh, better than we would apart. And that's exactly what this, this show works so well. Exactly. Um, anything else you want to, you want to tack on here before we uh, wrap it up? No, no. Um, I've said everything I want to say again. Thanks to all the commenters. Yes. Um, I promise, I promise you other book readers. I do know more than I say. Um, <laughs> yes, I am very purposefully holding some cards close to the chest. Yeah. Um, like who the dragon reborn was. So let's, um, let's let our TV viewers, um, enjoy, enjoy the moment and remember, remember those moments when you were reading and you, and something big happened. Um, remember how you felt when it was, you know, released to you sight unseen. So let's, let's give the television viewers, um, let's give them that experience and uh i'll see y'all in season two yes indeed uh again we appreciate all the support all the views all the likes all the subs all the comments and uh just keep it coming and um yeah we'll uh see you all in season two cheers everyone cheers